All right, in this video, I'm just gonna talk about the sensing category. So this one's a big one and you can use this in ever more clever ways and create game after game after application and program just using these options. So some simple ones would be touching. Now, when you see this drop down menu, it means other objects or things in the, um, usually it means objects. There's these other few options, just edge, mouse pointer, or pen trails. But other than that, what it means is say, for example, I draw like a, um, a little like L shaped wall and I call this, you rename sprites by clicking on it and going up here and going, here's my wall sprite so now when i go to this other sprite my little turtle and i say is it touching walls and right now it's false but i could use that like for example i'm like when the game starts forever just check if you are touching the walls so if you're touching the walls then you know just do something simple like say uh you lose and then you could this is not the, the best way to handle a program, but for ease and then just stop everything. Right. So now I'm like, oh, moving around, moving around. And then all of a sudden, ah, you lose and everything stops. Right. So that's a simple example is just checking if you're touching something. Um, similarly, you can also see if you're touching a color. This one doesn't work as well just because sprites are often um, because they're pixelated when they're not vector art drawn. Um, the pixels will have like different shades in them. So this won't work perfectly, but you can color sample. You were saying, are you touching? And then you can click on this and actually go over to the thing you want to touch and just go uh, this color right here. And now you can be like, oh, oh, wait, let's start the program. Woohoo, woohoo, woohoo. And then am I touching that color? Oh, shoot, we lose. So that's an easy one if you're going to like draw a maze or something or playing a little side scroll and you're like if you ever touch this death color then game over or instead of saying you lose it could be something just like a simple reset and we'll get to what this means later but you could just like broadcast a message and wait saying uh and the message could be like restart the game and what that lets you do is say over here when I receive the message, restart the game, oh, just put everything back to where it was. So we should go back to the center. We should point in line that, you know, uh, at 90 degrees. We should also set like number of lives back to three or whatever it is. Right. And so now when I start, oh, I can't leave that there because it doesn't actually set anything. We can go, OK, everything's good. Let's stop this and start again and go, oh, no, we're hitting this. Ah, you lose. And then it goes back. Right. So that's another thing you can do. Let's go back to the sensing now so we can check if we're touching objects, other sprites or backgrounds or colors. Right. Here would be the colors. You can also check if a color is touching a color. So you could have like different color items and you can say if these two items ever collide, then. Right. Uh, we already went over in the last video, you can ask a question and then here's the answer. So for example, if I ask a question and the answer is Steve and I hit enter, then when I click on this, its value is Steve. Whereas if I ask another question, put in three, now instead of Steve, the answer holds the three. And every time you put in a new answer, this changes. Um, another thing you could do is let's see, um, let's go over to the wall here. Another thing you could do is you could use the mouse X and mouse Y. So it's just telling you where the mouse X and Y are relative to this canvas. So when I click mouse X, I'm way in the negatives because I'm, if you start at zero, zero here and keep going this way, this is negative 1100. Whereas if I put it over here, it would be like negative 1300 or 1400. The Y here, if I stay pretty much in line with zero, it'll be close to zero. Whoa, five pixels off. Whereas if I go down, or up, but it's using this zero, zero here so you can find the mouse. So here's a simple one is you can just always, so you can say when I'm clicked forever, and then you could just do a quick motion thing. Like you could say forever, I want you to go to the mouse X and mouse. Y. Actually, and I'm gonna go to the costume and I'm gonna change this costume. I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna draw a new one. And all I'm gonna do is a little, uh, I don't know, a little teal, 
a circle. And now I would check the center. There's my little icon. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and delete uh, this one. So all I've got is this ball. And all I'm saying is as soon as I press start, forever go to the mouse X and Y. And so now it's right where the mouse is. Now I could do something similar, but instead of go to, I could do glide to. And so now it would be a little behind, right? I could do like for one second will be a pretty slow glide. So it'll go to where I am. And then if I move, it takes a while to catch up. But I could do something like a, 0.1 seconds and then it's a little lagging behind in this choppy sense and the smaller and smaller you get it is uh, a little more responsive right but it's still lagging behind you could do the similar thing um, doing it this way let's say you could um, right here point towards something and move in direction now this isn't in sensing um, but when you do point towards in movement, you can actually check random position, the mouse pointer or the center of the screen, which are all three very useful. So you could do point forever, point towards the mouse and move this far. And so now when I stop and I start this, it's now chasing the mouse, but in a much smoother sense because forever it's following the mouse. And the more steps, the more awkward it gets, but uh, faster. So see, now it's jumping like towards the mouse and past and then back and the past because 100 pixels is too far. But if we did something small, like one pixel, then it's so slow to catch up. Oh my gosh, it can't even get inside the screen. Let's go to zero, zero and try that again. Ready? So now it's so slowly chasing me. It's like a zombie or ghost in a maze. And I'm like, no, I'm trapped in the corner. Whoosh, I got away. Ah! And then you could say something like if uh, touching the mouse. So here's back to sensing. You can also check if the mouse is down. So maybe um, we make this game and it's like, ooh, if the, you know, if like Mario's looking at the ghost, they can't move. So we could do something like uh, in if else. So maybe something is happening. So if the mouse is down, I don't know, we do something. But if the mouse is not down, then chase, right? So here's like, I don't know, let's do a speed of four. Okay, again, I'm gonna go back to the center here. And so what I'm gonna do is it's chasing as soon as I hold the mouse down, ha ha, it can't get me. And then lift the mouse up, ah, it's chasing me, get away, get away, get away. So again, you can play with these things so much. So this is just sensing, is the mouse left button being clicked? Actually, let's check if the right button works. No, it's just the left button. That's what the mouse down is checking. All right, let's go back to Sensi. What else is there? Oh, so keys being pressed. Absolutely, right? So it's just true or false, and it has a list of most every key on a modern keyboard, right? And then over here, you can check the distance or direction to objects. So again, these are talking about other objects. So if I put another thing in here and I call this, uh, I don't know, this is your enemy. Now when I go back over to walls, I can say, what's the distance to enemy? And I click on it, it says, whoa, 242 pixels. But if I put it closer, the distance the enemy, oh, it's getting close, right? Or what direction is it to the enemy? So that would be about down. And if you go back to motion and look at directions, right? So point and direction, here's an easy little compass. So down would be 180. So it's going to be something like 180. Direction to enemy, 166 right um there's a lot of other useful information you can get from sensing too uh there's all these different color rgb a values things like that but i was thinking this one this one is so useful so for example of the enemy you could check its x position y position its top so for example the x position of enemy is at 40 but its left side because it has some pixel width is actually at 10. So even though its position is at 40, it's 30 pixels wide. So its left side's at 10. Its right side is at 70. Again, 30 pixels on both sides. Um, you could even do its volume, so how many pixels it takes up, uh, its balance, its width, its height. Uh, its So I mean, so many different things. You can get its costume number to see, oh, it's on costume zero, which is right here costume zero um okay so what else could you use so there's a timer you can use so you can show the timer you can reset it back to zero and then you could use that as like dun 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 only three seconds left dun 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 speeding up 
right? And then uh, there's some other stuff which are used less often, but I do have kids pull things from web URLs. Uh, you can make your own JavaScript blocks. And so often I've had kids play with uh, pulling stuff off the web, JSON files and JavaScript, which is pretty fun. Uh, there's also microphone and video and all sorts of different things um, that you can do. Oh, current date and time is a useful one that you can also use. All right, well, I hope that was interesting for you guys. Just going over some of these blocks. By far the most common thing we'll use is are we touching stuff? Let's ask and answer. And then we'll use the mouse positions. And we'll also use uh, point towards uh, or go to. Not as much go to, really it's the point towards. And so we can point towards like the mouse or the other object, things like that. For example, uh, I could always on the enemy, I could say point towards the walls. I should really rename that to a uh, green ball, okay? And so for the enemy, I could just say forever point towards the green ball. And, oh, I didn't even put a forever in there. So when clicked, forever point towards green ball and all that does now it doesn't move but it just points towards me whoa oh, look, at me. look at that so again hope you enjoyed the video and you can play around with that i mean the possibilities for that are pretty endless enjoy